Let's take a look at a task that virtually every Photoshop user will need to do at one point or another, removing a background. Now note to self, all images that you open, whether it be from a camera or a scan, usually have one locked background layer as the default layer. I want to make a selection of the girl and remove this purple wall she's on so maybe we could put her next to the Mona Lisa or standing in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. So I'm going to go to my favorite selection tool, the Quick Selection tool. The way the Quick Selection tool works is you paint in selections. And many people, when they first use this tool, try to aim for the edge because really you want a good edge. That's actually not the best target. If I start in the girl's forehead, and simply drag up and stay away from the edge, I'll let Photoshop do the heavy lifting or hard work for me. You get a pixel or two, or even farther, inside the object or subject you're trying to select, and I'm letting go and clicking and dragging. You can keep letting go and it will keep adding to your selection. And I'm heading straight down over the scarf down over her arm. I let go often to make sure I have a lot of undos. If I go too far out into the purple background, it will jump on me quickly. So I can just undo that. You can clean up your selection, but I'm going to use another of my favorite features to make this edge better. And we do want to get some of the wisps of hair, but not all of them will let Refine Edge make this selection far more accurate. Now, if I were to choose Select Inverse, which grabs the opposite, the background, and I simply press Delete, I'm going to delete to White and click OK. When I choose Select Deselect, it's clearly a rotten edge. It's not a great job. So I will choose Edit Step Backward 1, Edit Step Backward 2, Edit Step Backward 3 times in order to get the selection around the girl. I never remove a background or composite images pulling different ones together or really finish a selection without doing Refine Edge. Refine Edge is this handy button added a few versions ago. You can also find it under Select and Refine Edge. But I like to use just the button. So one click on Refine Edge will show me my original selection. Again, not the best. However, here's the magic. If I slide Radius up, it attempts to wipe out the background, leaving the object or subject you selected. So Radius also does a little transparency on the edge to hide where you're selecting. And if I got too much here, there's a tool in Refine Edge where I can paint and have it reevaluate. But I think it's done quite a good job. I can also contract. If I'm picking up too much purple, I can shift the edge inside the subject, grabbing less. And the white background is one of the best for viewing it on. I'll paint a little bit more into this purple that I'm seeing and Refine Edge cleaned it up more, but still left the wisps of hair, making it look as if this image was shot on a white background. Now, if I scoot the window over more, I'll notice I'm getting some transparency in her shirt that I may not want. So checking the box Smart Radius attempts to keep a little bit more of a solid edge. Sometimes if I'm blending to a new background, I don't like the smart radius. I'll just use less radius. And I get a little schmutz there. Okay, it's gone. So I could paint the edges to do a better job, picking up more or less hair or a more solid edge. When I'm finished, I'm not just going to hit OK. I'm going to choose Output to a Layer Mask. What this will do is name the background layer. It will name it Layer 0 and mask or hide away all 
of the original purple wall. So here I go. I'll click OK. There it is. This checkerboard pattern indicates transparency. It's better to use a checkerboard pattern than it is to use white because white is a real color. Checkerboard indicates it's clear or transparent, so we could drop any number of things in. And just to be a kind and good Photoshop user, in case someone were to open my file, I will name this layer zero, something more meaningful to me. I'll double click on layer zero and name it girl. And I'll press return or enter, and you have successfully removed a background by using the quick selection tool to paint a selection into the subject, then using Refine Edge to fine tune that selection and make it look very realistic and as if there was never any background there to begin with. So give this a try. It takes some practice with the quick selection tool to learn where to paint and how to paint. And there are more options, but if you've gotten the background removed, you accomplish your goal for this session or this lesson. So congratulations.